Hello, hi, this is Jim Mimlitz at Skatometrics. Uh, today I'm going to talk about using an Allen Bradley Micrologix PLC along with our Bell 202 radio modem. Now this, uh, this panel here to the left is an Allen Bradley Micrologix 1400 PLC. Underneath it is an EM100 ether meter flow meter gateway which is a device that we manufacture is our flagship instrumentation. It reads one or two encoder type water meters, translates the readings, both total and flow, into industrial protocols such as Modbus, DF1, and Ethernet IP. This particular panel is used to demonstrate our compatibility with the Allen Bradley protocols. The ether meter speaks DF1 full duplex, DF1 radio modem, and that's on the serial ports. It also speaks Ethernet IP over the Ethernet port. Typically what we do with this panel is we just have things wired directly just to show the functionality. However, in this case we're going to connect it with this, uh, this pair of radio modems. We're going to use those just to, just to show how you could uh, have a Micrologix talking to an ether meter uh, over a great distance using analog radios with our Bell 202 modem. Now in this case the Micrologix 1400 we are, it has three ports on it. Port 0 is a serial port RS-232 it's a DIN, DIN 8 pinout right there. Port 1 is an Ethernet port and port 2 is another serial port. This one is pinned out as a DB9 male port and we have set that port up for DF1 radio modem we have a standard straight through serial cable it comes out of that port and it goes into this first modem here the uh, ether meter we're coming out of its serial port and it goes into the second modem both modems are connected to an analog telemetry radio. These are VHF frequency, they could be UHF. That doesn't really matter. We also have uh, little stub antennas on them and we also have the radios. They're, they're set up for the same frequency. They have 10 dB attenuators and they're both set for minimum power. So uh, because they're in such close proximity, we, we don't want to saturate the receivers. Okay. Now this is the, uh, every five seconds, the Micrologix 1400 is set up to make a DF1 radio modem request to the ether meter to read a bank of N registers. So you can see the, uh, uh, transmit light lights up red solid for about 500 milliseconds, then the data comes out and then it then it releases. The reason for that timing is we the uh, we need to key up the transmitter on the radio and we need to give it time to settle down so typically we'll key it up for about 500 milliseconds then send the data out leave it keyed up for about 50-60 milliseconds after the data is completed and then release it and then the Micrologix then listens for the response from the ether meter. And you can see over here on the ether meter end, the yellow light means the channel's busy, it's receiving the data. You can also see that its channel busy corresponds with transmit from the Micrologix. And then you can see it respond back. Same sort of timing. Let's get a look at the uh, at the ladder logic here. Very simple program we have here. It's just a three line program. We have a five second timer. Every time that timer fires off, we send a message instruction. Let's get a look at that message instruction.
There it is. It's a 500 CPU read. And on the ether meter, we're, we're reading from an N register, N register 7. We're reading eight elements. And then this is the, uh, the N registers where we're going to land that data. Okay. We can also get a look at the communication channel configuration. Let's go up and get a look at channel 2, which is the port that we're using. You can see that we have that set up for a DF1 radio modem. The baud rate is 1200, which is the maximum baud rate that can be used on a Bell 202 modem. Uh, we're selecting no parity. We also select half duplex modem. We, we cannot transmit and receive at the same time with this type of modem. You have to transmit and then wait for a response. We're using RTS-CTS handshaking. And here's, here's where the timing comes in. Before we start a transmission sequence, we wait a 100 milliseconds. And, and that is just because of the nature of using radios and half duplex communications. We, have, we can't uh, have radios talking over each other. So we have to have some nice delays in there. So we wait 100 milliseconds. Then we key up the radio transmitter for 500 milliseconds, which is 25 times 20 milliseconds. We key it up for that amount of time. After it's elapsed, we send the data. After the, da the data is complete, we keep the transmitter keyed up for 60 more milliseconds. That's three times 20 milliseconds. And then we shut it down and wait for the response. Now you can see that uh, the jumpers on this, it's set for, for DCD, is set for RF. For the channel busy, we have the jumper set for invert. We have the equalizer jumper set to on. And we have the filter set to on. Also, RTS and CTS are jumper together. And so that, that either has to be done in the cable or it has to be done at the circuit board uh, level. And we made a modification on both of these modems to, uh, it's, it's only required for the, for the Allen Bradley PLC in this case. But uh, the Allen Bradley PLC will not transmit until it sees that CTS is asserted from the modem and on our modem CTS is uh, just a dead pin it uh, it doesn't do anything so so we uh, put in a shorting jumper from the RTS pin to the CTS pin which then uh, eliminates that problem with in terms of uh, working with the Allen Bradley Micrologics that is a modification by the way that we We'll be glad to take care of here at SCADA Metrics, or it's something that, that you as a customer could handle uh, with cabling. Okay, that completes our demo. If you have any questions on this, just give us a call. Thank you very much.